You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you man on Twitter, the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you in the Let's Play episode of Kingsguard. So y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes, or uh, next 16 or so minutes while entertaining you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Besides, it was likely unless it was likely useless to the rat. How much a wanted criminal could do with it other than pot it off, and you had other more pressing concerns at the moment. There was still the whole ordeal with Leandrus telling your father about what happened and the ensuing storm that would come from that. And getting on your knees and crying in remorse would be enough to keep him from tattling, and a thoughtful gift would likely be taken as a bribe, only increasing your sentence as well. How much could sway him? He was always the exemplar knight, after all. An unwavering beast man on the side of justice who never disobeyed your father's orders. When he was appointed as captain of the guard, the highest military rank in all of Yasan, there was little disagreement amongst the ranks. He had the skills, the merit, the achievements, and even the respect of his fellow knights. Other than quite a few complaints from nobles who had a distrust for all beastmen, there was no better choice. An ominous whistle flared in the distance, ringing throughout the town and catching several citizens, including Leandros, off guard. From the sound of the whistle, a thick plume of smoke rose up, covering the sky in ash. Everyone took note of the noise and smoke and then went about their business, though Leandros was still in a bit of a shock. No one paid it much mind with the second whistle ward. Even several city guards casually chatted to one another, as though they were unaware that the source of the source of such a ghastly wail might might have been a give me fire or worse. But this is nothing more than a timely occurrence. There's no need to be concerned. I suppose we should get moving. It's almost here. Uh, every day it sounds like the unholy wailing of corrupt spirits and wicked demons screeching from the pits of hell. What was that? N nothing. Let's just hurry along so we don't miss the train. Despite being in the lead, you could tell he was forcing himself with each step. The lion's tail was wrapped tightly around his leg. With the third whistle, he nearly jumped out of his greaves. The two of you followed a crowd of people all headed towards an austere yet beautiful brick and glass building. It was a central station that allowed one to board the iron horse, a mechanized cart nicknamed as a train that traveled around the city, and a source of the noise and smoke. It was created by inventors and scholars from Azite, a dependent city nation of Yasan. When your father caught wind of such a marvel, plans went to effect for making space to have it implemented into the city. It took ten years for it to be completed, but it was well worth the, worth the time, effort, and energy. The metal vehicle was truly an impressive machine that allowed me to visit all four corners of the city within, within an hour, and that wasn't all it was useful for. Information could be transferred from across long distances within a fraction of the time, and also aid in the trade of goods and services, helping grow many businesses. Because of the overwhelming popularity of the Iron Horse, Plans were already being put into effect to create a nationwide line to connect all the cities together. It truly was a herald of a new era. The era of machines. The train sounded, sounded one last whistle, informing everyone in the vicinity that they had arrived. Leon froze in his steps and his hand gripped down on your arm tight. Ouch! Leon! Oh, sorry. I'm still a little agitated from earlier. Careful or you'll break off my arm! But right. Leandros loosened his grip and you rubbed at your sore arm, hamming it up just in a... Hamming it up just enough to hopefully make him feel guilty and possibly ease up on your punishment later. Well, let's go. I may be Prince, but it's not going to wait for me. You know, perhaps it might be best if we go back home. After all, you can always use the exercise. If what happened today, absolutely not. Maybe we could get a horse then. You like riding horses, right? Leon. Yeah, that sounds better than getting in the rusty thing. In the rusty thing, anyway. Come on, Jake, let's go. I think there should be a stable nearby. Despite how much the populace had nothing but praise for the Iron Horse, there was the naysayers and skeptics who refused to step foot on the machine or even acknowledge its achievements. The Andrus was one of those people, always preferring to avoid taking the train as much as possible and choosing to walk or ride horses. But there was no way you were walking back, and a horse ride was always bumpy. The train had soft seats and would get you home without, without you needing to lift a finger. Leon, you are free to walk or ride a horse or whatever, but I am too tired for that. I'm taking the train. Jake, be reasonable. Be reasonable now, you know. Leon, you don't have to be so afraid of it. What? A afraid? Don't be ridiculous. I just refuse to let you step foot aboard such an obvious death trap. Death trap? What? Ugh, never mind. Look, the line is already moving, so the train is boarding now. If you don't hurry, we're going to miss it. Now, are you coming or not? All right. This time you took the lead, guiding Leandrus towards the towards the queue of individuals all waiting to board the Iron Horse. There was a menagerie of citizens all lined up at this time of day, mostly workers who were finished with their jobs, but you did spot a few nobles heading home after 
find me heading home after a luxurious day of shopping. But the lion moved on a duo of exhausted workers complained to one another, and you felt your ears stretch a little in their direction. It wasn't eavesdropping, but it was a bit hard to ignore them. I swear, it's a shame to... It's, it's the same shite the day in and day out. We get on the train in the morning, work for that bastard for barely any coin, then hop back on the train and head back to our nagging wives. Nothing ever changes. What's a man gotta do to catch a break? It ain't all that bad. At least you and the missus ain't starving anymore. You hear that, Danny? Things get things get you hear that you hear about Danny? He's got so bad for him he had to resort to stealing. That idiot spent all his coin on booze. He dug himself his own grave, and now he's digging in the mines in Monero. Ain't asking for much. Just a little change is all. A little excitement in my life, you know? See, I'm strung up all the time. We're getting these long hours. Even when I get home, the damn missus doesn't want to do anything except go to bed. We said we'd get rich, live up, the, live up, live up in the parlor and have a thousand servants. Why, when we were younger, there wouldn't be an alley we didn't. You know, I just, I just, I think I got just the thing you need. Yeah? And what's that? Why don't you take a look over here? He followed the man's gaze over towards a gaudy-looking establishment where several scantily dressed men and women awaited out front. They waved and ushered pedestrians into their establishment with enticing stares and honeyed words. At Floozy House? It ain't like the others you've heard of. Oh, I've heard of it all right. They got beasts going there, too. Yeah? And? It ain't like he got to sleep with them. Got plenty of nice, supple-titted women just begging for a man. They'll do almost anything you ask for. Ha! Huh. The missus would kill me if she caught me in here. Well, as far as she knows, you're still at work. Boss can be so boss can be so demanding, you know? Kept you late? Or maybe the train stopped running and you had to walk your way back if you catch my drift. Think about it now, my favorite goddess might be there today. You can't be serious. The worker smirked and then started off in the direction of the building and a woman took him by the arm. He turned back and waved before heading inside. Damn bastard, you're gonna get me beat for this. What the hell? Got paid a little extra, and I need a little something to take the stress away. The other man sauntered on forth, leaving a gap in the line, as he was greeted by another woman who also took him inside. Lucky. No. Huh? No. What? You know what. That? I wasn't going to... The lion caught you staring over the bordello where the two men had just entered. Two new scantily dressed greeters, males this time, came forth from the building and began to attract new customers with their exotic dances. The establishment was named Rose's Cathedral, a palace of desire that made all manner of pleasurable fantasies. Made true all manner of pleasurable fantasies. It was one of the few brothels in the city that catered to men or beastmen of any race or color. If I had a silver for every time you said that... You're mistaken, I was just... Mm. Alright, so I was looking. You caught me. But it wasn't like I was going to go in there. I wish you would never go... I wish you would never go in there. You have a reputation to uphold, after all. To who? Not like anyone in the kingdom knows who I am, anyway. To the other nobles. Let them think what they want. It's not like they can do anything about it. Father pretty much keeps them at bay. <sighs> it's not just that you know. I plan to keep my promise. My promise till my last breath. But that won't protect you if someone else sees you and begins to spread rumors. You're going to be king soon and you'll be needing a queen. All this fooling around will not. Will not. St will need to stop eventually. One second y'all. Mm. Alright. Mm, mm, mm. It'd been so long that you nearly forgot the promise Leandris made to you. Of a secret that you is a secret that you never even told your father for fear of his reaction. It all started on a cold winter's day some several years ago. As per nightly tradition and in quite a rebellious stage in your life, you quietly snuck out of the castle to make a visit to Rose's Cathedral. You gave your coin, and a handsome, broad chested, brown haired man guided you to a room for what should have been a pleasurable evening of intense passion. As it turned out, you weren't so sneaky as Leandro shattered you all the way to the establishment and walked right in on you and your lusty chauffeur. You'd never forget the look of disbelief on his face as he stood in the doorway, unable to even speak. He used to say you were in such a he used to say you were in as much shock as he was, and he couldn't find and couldn't find the drive to the drive to continue despite your seducer's advances to ignore the intruder. Leandro's finally regained composure, he walked back out the door, head low as though he were ashamed to see such a thing. You thought he returned back to the castle to tell your father of what he had seen. When you were when you redressed and stepped outside, there he, there he was, arms crossed, stoic face like your father, and ready to take you home without a word. From that day forward, you dreaded every waking hour, wondering when he was going to bring it up. It wasn't until days later, at the end of a sword training session with him, that he decided to break the ice. You wanted to shrill up like a slug in the summer. This was such a truth that you had hoped to you had hoped to keep secret to your grave, and now one of the worst people possible, no, worst 
but now one of the worst people possible knew. But your worries, your concerns, your fears, they were for naught. He didn't chastise you or tell you that you weren't right in the head, but rather he consoled you and tried to understand. He didn't care that you were attracted to, he just wanted to know why it was that you felt you, that you felt the need to hide it. He burst into tears, crying more than enough to fill the ocean twice over. It was the most memorable heart-to-heart -heart you've ever had with him. And from that day forward, he made a promise to keep it to himself. Especially with what, what would happen if some of the nobles found out. Not all of them were honorable, with such gossip that could gain so much hanging so much hanging it over your head. You doubt even your father could do anything to stop them. It's not easy being It's not easy being a prince, I know that. But you have to understand that there are consequences to your actions. Alright, I got it already. I'm not allowed to ever have fun and must remain in that dusty old castle for the end of my days. Then when I'm old, grouchy, and miserable and on my deathbed, I'll finally be set free, just like father was. Just like father wants. I wouldn't say was. He's still alive, I think. <laughs> That's not what he... Hmm. Forget it. We'll talk more about this later. Regardless how many times Leandrus warned you of someone finding out, you, you still never learned your lesson and went right back to sneaking out of the castle at night. Of course, now that damn lion knew where you'd snuck off to, and it wouldn't be long before he would burst in on you in the middle of your fun, then proceed to stand there waiting until you got dressed and left with him. Was, excuse me. It was so embarrassing to have you be dragged out like a child. Even the patrons and workers started to give you a nickname. The princess, due to how often the hero would come to save you. Little did they know how close of a mark that nickname was to you. Your father's overbearing nature made sure that the citizens knew not knew not who you were, well, other than a few select nobles and knights. They probably thought you were nothing more than a young noble with a plenty of coin to spend in an overactive libido rather than a prince in line to be king. Of course, you did cut it a, you did cut it close a few times, and Leandrus merely it nearly made a slip of the tongue who you were who you were when he would pick you up. One of the guys out front waved at you and you waved back with a giddy little smile. For the love of Yeah, go, go! Leandrus grabbed you grabbed you by the hand again, and you were whisked away once once whisked away onto the train. Your last sight was on them giggling. Likely thinking of you once again being saved by your hero. Ah, finally a place to rest my feet. You plopped down onto the comfy seat and stretched your legs out, taking up the entire space. Being in the first class of compartments was the greatest of luxuries. You had spacious and comfy seats, priority when entering and exiting the train, and best of all, you had the space to yourself. It was only one time you had, one time that you had consciously made the decision to immerse yourself to immerse with the common folk, as you called it, and sat in the third-class carriages. The seats were made of wood that made, you back, that made your back and butt ache worse than a day on the saddle. Kids screamed and cried in your ear, and some drunk fellow smelling heavily of piss and alcohol nearly fell asleep on you. One second, y'all gonna have a drink? Hmm. Alrighty. Let's get back into it. After that, you made sure to never make that mistake again. Leandrus was slow to ease himself into the cabin. He was already a pretty big man, with his armor on it only made, it, made his entry more difficult. He cracked open the window lid in some fresh air before he sat down. Even though the train wasn't moving, he still sat stiffly with his arms crossed and feet tapping impatiently. It was impossible to ignore how much noise he was making, yet he always got this way after he, after he took the train. Hey. Hey, Lian. Gah! Huh? Huh? Oh, Jake, uh, don't scare me like that. Scare you? I was just trying to... Uh, look, if you really aren't feeling up for the train, we can leave. No, I'm fine. Really? We still have time before it departs. Forget it, we're already here. Just just hold on to something uh, secure. Once again, the train... Once the train began to move, his nails pierced into the plush cushions while his fur bristled like a porcupine. Jake, are you holding on tight? Holding on to what? We're not going that fast. It's just a precaution. You never know what may happen. Nothing is going to happen. We've ridden this how many times now? I don't trust this thing. Several dozen injured and ten killed when this thing crashed in Renero. That was t that was years ago. And besides, it was an accident when the driver stopped the train too suddenly while traveling at full speed. As the Iron Horse picked up momentum, Leandrus like tensed even further. Ugh, for a lion. For a lion, don't you think you were being a bit cowardly? What about all those times you had to fight against multiple bandits all by yourself? I'm not fighting bandits. I'm riding in the belly of a 5,000-pound monster made of steel and wood, hurtling us at God knows what speed. He scooted himself closer to the window, let the wind whip through his mane. Things were never going to change with him, and soon his, his incessant feet tapping was accompanied by an even more annoying drumming of his nails across the window seal. You weren't certain how much more you could take. 
There had to be some way to get him to calm down or get over his fear of trains. Reassure him. He needed to get his attention away from the fact that he was riding the train and have him focus on something. He was a busy man, something always on his mind. Whenever he got on the train, he could only, he could only ever think of survival. Like, this would be his final resting place. Hey, if you keep staring out the window like, like that, you're only going to get even more nervous. I'm not nervous. Why do you look so tense? You're crouching like you're set to jump out a window at the moment a moment's notice. I'm fine. And perhaps you might want to ease up on the cushions? You're about to, you're about ready to rip the stuffing out of them. Then just looked down and retracted his nails. The fabric looked a tad bit stretched and there were a few pieces of loose stitching sticking out, but nothing too bad. Why don't you try closing your eyes? Not going to happen. Not on this hellbound metal wagon. You leaned forward and put your hand on Leandro's shaking paw, causing him to nearly leap out of his seat again. Just take a deep breath and close your eyes. You'll feel better. Mother always told me to do this whenever I was scared. Perhaps it might work for you? I'm not in the mood to be consoled by you right now. It's either that or you can just suffer the rest of the way. Hmm. You better not be thinking about running away from me again. And go where? Out the window? I've seen you do dangerous things before, like jumping down the stairs. You could have been seriously injured, you know. Damn it, just close your eyes already. Mm. All right. But don't you think for a second that my guard is down. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.